So yes, no, I'm not a morning person at all. Uh, I find I'm actually very grouchy in the morning. And so uh, instead of like leaving the day feeling like early leaving my, for my office, feeling uh, discontent, I decided to like, I have like a playlist that I listen to that's like upbeat, positive, happy songs. And like, I'm like getting ready. And by the end, you know, I'm like walking out and I'm ready to go. So I hacked my mornings. Uh, maybe this is about focus. Maybe that's, maybe yes, I'm serverlessing <laughs> my day. <laughs> All right, so, um, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell everybody I'm really, really nervous, um, and so I'm gonna try to talk slow. Uh, all right, a serverless state of mind. What does that mean? Um, I think we've heard a lot about like what serverless means to everybody and how people are using it, um, but I'm going to explain um, what serverless means to me. Um, uh, this is going to be like a non-technologist, wannabe technologist, and uh, so we're going to have to go on a, um, a little journey so we can fully understand my story. Um, I will never forget my first experience uh, on the internet. Um, my int introduction to computers was not like many of the stories that I hear. Uh, we did not have a computer in my home. My dad was not an early adopter. I don't think any of my friends had computers. Uh, and in, really in high school, I did a typing class and that was my only experience. Um, it wasn't until uh, after I graduated uh, when my mother met my stepfather uh, who owned a company called Microage and they sold computer equipment. Um, in that same office, he actually had a startup that he was uh, working on with a number of other engineers and it was called Technology Solutions Network. Um, I decided that I, I wanted to join this team and I was able to talk them into giving me a job. Um, I was going to research the internet and try to find information about uh, executives um, in horizontal and, uh, horizontal and vertical markets that they were approaching. Um, I'll never forget like sitting at my desk and like how cool I felt, like listening to like all the problems that they were working on and how they were using computers to solve those. And then they were telling me stories. These guys came from security, they worked in banking. Uh, some of them, and uh, they would tell me stories about how they would join these hacky like chat rooms and they were trying to understand like where the next security infiltrations were coming from and I was completely mesmerized that like hacking was a thing. Uh, in fact, I actually was able to get them to uh, teach me how to hack into somebody's email once. Uh, just once, I don't advise it, but I did, it was like cool, because like I wanted to be, be able to break it and say like I had done it, and my mind was actually blown. Um, so that day, I'm working there, it's been about an hour, and I'm trying to figure out where I last was. And I'm clicking around on different, uh, you know, different places on the, the page, and all of a sudden I got this pop-up, and it said that I'd performed an illegal operation. The computer is going to be shut down, and um, that a vendor needed to be contacted. And I remember, like, like there's like this very, I was like stopped in my tracks. I went from feeling really like awesome and successful, like that I had this job and working with this team, to feeling like maybe computers were not meant for me. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be on the internet. Turns out the computer was just lost and didn't know what to do, so it just shut itself down so it could like start again. Um, I was super, I, I was worried. I was like trying to figure out at this moment, like what am I gonna tell my stepdad? Like, are the cops coming here? Like I just performed an illegal operation. What did that mean? You know, like, uh, are we, is he not gonna be able to use the software that we were using anymore? And I, um, I didn't really know what to do next. Uh, uh, with a job at TSN, I ended up working myself out of a job. Um, uh, they were going to move down to Marina Del Rey, California, and I decided that instead I wanted to uh, be lost, <laughs> unhappy, negative. Uh, that's actually not where I wanted to be, uh, but that's, act that's where I ended up. Um, fast forward to uh, my mid-30s, and uh, I'm a single mom. I've been a single mom uh, since my, well, since the boy's entire life, basically. Um, I'm not necessarily like making the, the best choices. I hate my job. In fact, I would cry on the way to work, uh, fearing that like our medical director was going to turn down um, care for an incoming member to the um, you know our medical plan. Uh, I was super focused on anything, only negative things, and I, I knew I needed something new. Um, there had to be something better out there. 
I, I met a lot of people that seemed to like their jobs and I started to re try to like remember the times when I actually felt the most connected and the times when I felt the most me. Um, times where I didn't feel stagnant and times that I felt like I was learning, times when I was growing. Moved to Portland, there's tons of tech jobs. I'm excited about this because I'm remembering what it felt like when I was 18 to be working at Technology Solutions Network with, with my stepdad and the other engineers at the office. I was also excited because there's this vibrant, growing community in Portland and I really was looking to be involved and to find meaning uh, you know, my work, my personal life, really anything. I'm applying for jobs, uh, and I think I applied for 40 jobs in a year, and I did not get one interview. I did get a couple responses back, um, and I realized that I was going to have to try to figure out another way into tech. And so I decided that I am going to uh, um, look for events to volunteer at and ways to you know, uh, be involved. I ended up at Tech Fest Northwest, and Kara Swisher was there. Um, I had this opportunity to take, to, uh, take a role for four hours a week, and this is, uh, my job was full time. I, um, Kara, Kara inspired me that day to take that leap. Um, I needed to find meaning in my work. I needed to feel like I was doing something again. I needed to feel like full of life, I, and I, I needed something different. So I end up now, after like Tech Fest Northwest and meeting Kara, I take that four hour a week job and I turn it into uh, a full time job within two weeks. I'm now working at a startup called Ripfog and I'm on a team of about six. This team is awesome. I mean, they're amplifying me, they're supporting me, trying to help me learn. Um, I'm trying to understand what they're saying. In fact, I stopped the meeting because I could not figure out who Cassandra and Jason were. <laughs> and, <laughs> I thought we didn't have a computer in the office for somebody and I was going to be upset. Uh, turns out that this is uh, tech jargon and uh, uh, meanwhile I'm like learning how to use some Python and I um, decide to move to a different role. I want to learn more about the business, um, but there's still something always missing. I'm always, there's always something. I always want to feel like I'm doing more and like understand what the code is actually doing. Um, as I work to understand more of the business, there's like this newfound positivity starts taking place. Uh, I went from an office manager to director op operations to customer and people operations, but there was still like this desire to want to be more involved. Um, at Reflect, uh, we, uh, they set me up to update our documentation, so I used GitHub Online or you know, GitHub Web. And uh, this was to make sure that all of our docs were uh, up to par at our product launch. And uh, doing that, like, I felt cool. Like, I felt like I was like one of the team. It's, you know, it's hard to be at a startup in a, you know, a sort of port type role and feeling like you actually are making contributions to what's going on and the business uh, excelling. Um, we got acquired by Puppet. And it, when, it timed it, when it was time to turn in our um, IP code contributors, I was on that list and I felt like a baller. I was so excited about it. I mean, like that, like not moving on with the team, uh, but still, like having that contribution, like that like did it for me. That was all I needed. Um, being a nerd is cool. Uh, being able to solve problems that others can't is cool. Uh, being able to automate tasks that like you don't want to do daily, that is cool. Being able to write a, a, a script and have like your computer log into every app that you want, that's cool. I still can't do that. Um, get to Stackery. Uh, they create this job for me. I'm the ecosystems director and uh, I'm going to be managing our strategic partners and relationships and our high touch customers and I'm, I need to get involved with the community. This is going to be hard when I don't understand anything about the cloud. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what serverless actually is. Are there servers in serverless? Like, why are we call it serverless if there's servers? And we had names like Sam, and I'm trying to figure out was that the VP of engineering at our office, and why we were naming products after him? The pub, sub, SNS, you know, SQS. Like, I thought like pub. Like, I was thinking it was a bar. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, anyhow, I definitely felt out out of my element. Um, uh, being on this team meant something to me. I, uh, working at, uh, in startups, uh, being the only female on each, all, all the other teams, this one looked different and it felt different too. 
Uh, every time I was out of my element, the team would circle back to me and let me know why the wins I had were contributing to our success and why they actually brought me in and created this role for me. We had our founders leaning in on engineering, on our engineers or people in marketing for help with problems or like solving problems that weren't in their purview. Um, the team's amazing. The support, the trust, the focus that they had for like building for our customers. Uh, it's, it was something that I hadn't experienced before. A month later, I go to Serverless Conf in San Francisco, and I decide I'm going to join this hackathon because there's no better way to learn than to actually like try to build it yourself. Uh, I was very nervous about this. Um, in fact, I stood outside of the building and cried for about 15 minutes trying to talk myself into leaving because I tried to join a hackathon before and wasn't allowed to be part of the team just because I wasn't technical and wasn't really going to be contribute. and there's prizes to win. <laughs> They get people, so like you need to be able to code. Uh, this team was different. They sat me down. They asked what I was going to be good at. I wrote the business plan. We all took different projects. We were using um, Amazon Translate and Amazon Comprehend to take data because we were building a, a voice pipe where you could actually listen in for key topics and meetings instead of you know being in meetings eight hours a day. If I want to look at just if I want to hear about Lambda, I can go specifically to that part. Um, our team actually won. <laughs> And it was awesome. Uh, I had never felt like a part of, uh, like in a, in an engineering, in a, like an engineering presence. I'd never felt like I was actually like a valued member of that team, and I did. Um, something's different about this community. With every event that I attend, I meet more and more people that are willing to share best practices and willing to listen and to learn. This community is it's welcoming, and I can't, I can't help but want more of it. I can't help but be more inspired. Uh, and I can't, be, I can't help but start to like think, is like if serve, what, what does that mean? What does serverless for everyone mean? If, for, if serverless for everyone, what will this mean for me? I don't need to understand networking, virtualization, load balancing, runtimes, application integration, data management, data centers, program, you know, permission storage, middleware hypervisors. What if, what, does this, what if these barriers to entry, does this allow more uh, people from non-technical backgrounds be, be able to come in and to build something? Does it, does it, uh, does it allow um, junior developers come in and, and own a domain? Can I serverless? <laughs> Can I actually do this now? Can I build something that would be useful to me? Do I have any cron jobs that I could, that I could use lambdas for? I actually had a Google cron jobs. It took me forever to figure out what those were. Uh, and I started like, I'm asking myself, can I actually get an app running? Can I serverless? I came across a blog post by Ben Kehoe. We heard from him this morning, and it was funny because I mentioned to him that I was going to talk when we were going to be at the same conference that I was going to use serverless as state of mind. He said, "Oh, me too," and I was like, "Oh, great!" But then <laughs> thinking that like he's very tech, our talks are going to be completely different, and also that this 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 inspired me. It was when I read this that I actually started thinking about how I actually was using a serverless mindset. Maybe I already was serverlessing. I started to obsess about how this made me feel. Um, I started to obsess about what my personal value was. What was it to me? What was it to being a mom? What was it, what was it at, at my job? What's my business value? I couldn't get this sentence out of my mind. Serverless is about how you make decisions, not about your choices. I had to start, I, I realized in that like, I had to start trusting the decisions that I was making, knowing that I was taking full, like a big account of the big picture, that I was thinking forward and I was looking back. Once a week, I'm reviewing my goals and making sure that any new information or opportunities hasn't uh, made, want to make me shift that, shift what uh, goals that I'm working on. Uh, for instance, like when a talk happens, you get like I was studying for my um, cloud practitioners, um, and I now wrote two talks. <laughs> um, I also reflect on the week before, uh, noting places where I excel, and I actually and uh, note two learning areas. I'm looking for ways to automate, eliminate, streamline workflows using Zapier. Um, I use Instacart, using help around the house. Anything that I can do to make my life easier and allow me to accomplish the tasks that are actually meaningful for, to me, the ones that I want to complete, uh, that's where I'm going to focus. 
I, now that I think I serverless, I decide I want more serverless. <laughs> so if I have a serverless mindset, now it was this learning curve is this, it's going to be less daunting. We have Stackery. Stackery says it can, you know, it, it uh, integrates all those AWS services together. So if it audit, can automate some of that, would jumping into serverless now mean something different to me? Uh, I decided I needed an accountability partner, so I reached out to one of our customers who is also working on talks and moving, get, you know, moving forward as more of a leader in his uh, in his department. We set goals uh, that we're going to hold ourselves to to have uh, our uh, AWS certificates complete. I think we have like we have you can see a cloud guru in here. <laughs> we're using a cloud guru to track our progress. Um, and, and building by working and building an app while taking um, while taking this course, I mean taking this course has allowed me to streamline my focus because I'm actually working on building an app and learning along the way. Uh, I decide that I want to uh, be able to update uh, Google Sheets with information. I want to be able to read my email, and I wanted to take that use a Lambda to update uh, Google uh, Google Sheet. I had no idea how hard this was going to be. When I started this, uh, and I grabbed uh, one of the ladies on our marketing team, I said, hey, do you want to learn how to do this uh, with me? And she was in. Uh, so our VP of development set uh, us up with our own uh, development and production workflows, and we got it to work. <laughs> this was amazing to me. I, uh, <laughs> when I first started doing this, I was actually trying to read the Google Sheet and not do anything with it. And I sat there for an hour trying to figure out what I'd done wrong, realizing it was doing exactly what I told it to do. I just didn't ask it to return any results. Uh, <laughs> um, then I decided, okay, maybe I can build a maybe I can build a web app. Maybe I could. Maybe, can I follow along with these tutorials enough to be able to do that using Stackery? I use Lambda for the back end. I set up API Gateway as the interface. I use Dynamo DB. I uh, have S3 for like the hosting the front end, and I have Cognito that's using, uh, that's managing the authentication, the authorization, and our user management. That I built in Stackery, not understanding any of the services. I use all the AWS. It's like I, I think about uh, when Adrian Kokoff talks about you know using AWS Legos, to, you know, to build the Millennium Falcon. I did that. This, this with this, I did that. Um, uh, I'm now decided I want to I want to do more, so I need to build my own webhook because I want it to listen and you know post events. Uh, I I want to build a Slack bot. I want to build a Slack <laughs> a Slack bot with it. Uh, I don't need to understand Velocity tem templates. I don't need to understand AWS services. I don't even need to understand the cloud formation schemas because I'm using third party tools that are enabling me to do these things. Uh, I was able to get this webhook to work, and again. I couldn't believe it. Like I was actually like utilizing the tech that I had been working on teams to build. It felt amazing. I can serverless. And I have to remind myself that I'm scared when I'm doing this. I'm scared of failing. I'm scared that I don't have enough information. I'm scared that I can't. But I remind myself <laughs> that I can keep climbing the service letters by giving myself notes and reminders like this, which I'm going to use my Slack bot eventually to actually generate these for me. <laughs> um, I'm focusing on how I can provide value, like both professionally and uh, personally. Uh, I am working to continue achieving my serverless mindset. This non-technologist just wrote this unicorn write app. I built my own webhook. I've automated tasks. Uh, I'm extremely excited for all that uh, there is to come. Um, what are you going to build? Like, there's what 75 fun pieces here. Like, I can only imagine with the limited information that I have and the things that I've been able to build, what you can build. Uh, I'm looking forward for everybody sharing that all with me. Uh, thank you for having me out. <laughs> uh, please share uh, your ideas, um, what, what you're looking forward to building this year. Thank you.